I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaga Diamond. What's up, peoples? How you doing? It is a great day, and I'm so very excited to be here. We have an amazing author on the show. Oh, yes, we do. We do. Mr. Kathan is here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about your book. You do have a book called American Holy Days, The Heart and Soul of Our National Holidays. Tell us about that. Why I wrote the book. And the answer is that I bought a more recent translation of the log that Christopher Columbus made or kept on his first journey to the New World. And it, re it, and it showed a whole new perspective of the character of Columbus. I decided to research it and write it. And then I turned to all the other holidays and did the same. Hmm. Tell me about this. I mean, that sounds very, very interesting. I didn't know nothing about that. Well, uh, I, I learned, for example, that uh, Christopher Columbus was a very deeply religious man and that he led all of the holy um, offices of the Catholic Church on board ship. I also learned that uh, he told his not to hurt the natives, not to take anything that belonged to them. But, but his uh, flagship, the Santa Maria, uh, was, uh, uh, was disabled. It wasn't able to return to Spain. And the, uh, the group crewmen uh, stayed, took uh, timbers from the ship, and built a fortress. When Columbus came back on his second voyage, he discovered that all his crewmen had been killed by the natives. And he decided that these were not innocent people, that, that, the, uh, that Columbus and his uh, crew members needed to defend themselves. And then it, uh, it just got worse after that. Yeah. So writing this book, you know, how has this changed your life? Changed my life uh, uh, a, a great deal. Uh, I'm, I'm just um, uh, really impressed by uh, all the things that uh, that I uh, uh, learned about uh, about these uh, holidays. I was um, I was so su surprised, for example, that individuals like uh, uh, really helped make these holidays national like mm -hmm. Sarah Joseph Hale a woman in New Hampshire who wrote to five United States presidents and only Abraham Lincoln responded and proclaimed the first Thanksgiving on in, 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 in 1863 or Opal Lee a, woman, a retired teacher from Texas who mm -hmm. lobbied the United States Congress regarding Juneteenth so that the Senate voted unanimously and the U.S. House voted overwhelmingly to make Juneteenth a, hol a federal holiday uh, two and a half years ago. So these 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 were things that really surprised me a great deal. Uh, wow. Also, two two men, one from Pennsylvania, one from Wisconsin, did all the work in making uh, uh, Flag Day a national holiday. There were many other things that surprised me. For example, uh, I learned that George Washington was not a deist like uh, Thomas Jefferson, but was a mainstream Anglican, which was common in the southern states during the colonial period. So th these were the, the amazing things that uh, that 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 I uh, I learned in wow. writing this. Uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. What is unique and distinctive about this book? What is unique is that it includes not only Flag Day, but also Constitution Day, which most people have never heard of, and also this newest holiday that I mentioned, Juneteenth. But more important, I have explored the religious and spiritual dimensions of these holidays. And you don't find that in textbooks anyplace. 
Yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. My goodness. My... So what is the target audience here? I, I would say uh, students and all their teachers and, and every level of every school, um, particularly high school, colleges and universities, also clergy, clergy of all uh, religious institutions, and then members of hereditary patriotic societies like the DAR, Mm -hmm. And also uh, government leaders on uh, the uh, local, state, and national level. So you know, anybody who's interested in American history <laughs> would be interested in the book. Awesome. Awesome. Where did you get the title from? Three different places. First of all, Holy Days, or holiday, holidays comes from the English Holy Days. Okay, secondly, people observe these holidays religiously. And in my book, I talk about a Korean family in northern Minnesota. The, the mother would not use the Korean food on Thanksgiving, but she said we need to eat turkey and become American. And then the third is not so familiar, and that's the it's it's the holy days of American civil religion. The the great sociologist Robert Della Bella uh, defined uh, American civil religion back in 1967, and and I have um, and I I have written uh, extensively about it, and I'm going to give you a definition that the American civil religion is the peculiar blending of patriotism and piety that has characterized our public life as a nation and our self-understanding as a people with a special purpose and destiny in the world. And this American civil religion has sacred scriptures, shrines, saints, and also holy days. And I wrote about the holy days. Wow. Well, you're teaching me something new now. I'm telling you, what are some of the reactions to this book? I mean, I, I didn't know a lot of this stuff you're saying. Well, uh, one important reaction uh, is, is that uh, it uh, takes away uh, the, the trivialization of our holidays. They, these uh, holidays have been... Uh, been overwhelmed with uh, consumerism, materialism, uh, long week, the long weekends, um, and uh, people are saying that my book helps to restore the uh, the the, um, the the story of how these uh, holidays originated and how they were celebrated. Mm. I say, how can your book be an influence on the celebration of holidays? How, how, what kind of uh, oh what kind of influence influence oh, there yeah mm -hmm. there are many things I'd like to see happen okay one is that the calendars would put back Columbus Day rather than Indigenous Peoples Day I would like to see for example uh, John Adams in his letter to his uh, wife said that uh, these uh, that the Independence the Day of Independence would be commemorated with uh, uh, in the future, uh, annually with fireworks and parades, but also with solemn acts of devotion to Almighty God. And I'd like I'd like to to see uh, that happen more in our churches and uh, religious in institutions. Uh, also, I'd I'd like to see um, the um, uh, labor uh, uh, Labor Day uh, more. Uh, more than just the end of uh, summer, but a day to remember the thousands of people, workers who were killed in industrial accidents and mining disasters and fires and labor conflicts. Um, all, all of these things I'd like to see uh, happen. Uh, of course, uh, I, I'd like to see it as a resource to oppose a movement of Christian nationalism in our country to try to preserve the separation of church and state, which is uh, in, in the original Constitution as well as in the First Amendment. Right. Wow. Wow. And let me ask you a question. So yeah. 
why are New Year's and Christmas left out? They're left out because um, they they uh, did not influence American history or uh, help to um, to shape the the uh, American identity. Uh, I stayed away from religious holidays. Uh, I wanted to deal with American patriotic holidays. Mm, okay, okay. And then uh, how um how how can Juneteenth be celebrated by white people as well as blacks? Yes. I would like to see it celebrated by by, uh, by by white people as well as black people because it was the end of slavery. Uh, June 19th, 1865 uh, marked the end of slavery through the third um, military order issued in Galveston, Texas by General uh, Gordon Granger. Um, and uh, the first part of that third order was that all the slaves of Texas are free. Wow. And uh, I, I submit that th this was also a, a freedom for the slaveholder because no longer were they uh, in a, a, a cruel, inhumane system that they, re re they helped them to return to some kind of moral standard and to, to a sense of justice. Well, that is beautiful. That is wonderful. Where can people find your book? Well, uh, with and stock, uh, the publisher in Eugene, Oregon, um, uh, people can order the book directly from them, but there, it's also in bookstores um, from Amazon, from Barnes and Noble, uh, other other bookstores. It's, and by the way, the second edition has just been published. Nice. And I will and I will be sending you a copy of that second edition, which include, in, includes the whole section on Juneteenth, the National Independence Day. I love that. Isn't that, isn't that great? That is great. That is wonderful. Wow, wow. Well, I want to thank you so very much for being on the show and for bringing your, your unique perspective on the book. And I wanna make sure I say American Holy Days, the heart and soul of our national holidays. Um, is there anything that we left out today that you'd like to tell your fans and the readers? Well, uh, yes, one final thing that uh, I think that this book can, can help people understand what we have in common as Americans, what we, what we uh, share, uh, in, in common, uh, what we, um, uh, what binds us together as, as Americans, in spite of uh, any kind of uh, uh, divisiveness, uh, political division. Okay? Awesome. Awesome. Mr. Kathan, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it so very much. We're going to have the link to that book, uh, American Holy Days, the heart and soul of our national holidays in the description box below. So it'll be easy for you guys to go ahead and find that. I want to thank you guys for listening and don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye. Thank you very much.